Hey, what's up everybody? Chicago Goonie here, bringing you another Arsenal talk. Uh, in this Arsenal talk, I'll be covering the Leicester City game. Well, three points is three points, I guess. <laughs> uh, just a few things that I'm going to be covering um, within this Arsenal talk about the game. Uh, the way we played in the first half and the second half, uh, Lexi Sanchez's injury, or possible injury, uh, Aaron Ramsey's injury, of course, and then, uh, yeah, just the way we played, uh, and, and like throughout the entire game somewhat. But uh, to get into it, um, first half, you know, it, uh, uh, we were really charging at them. You know, Leicester City had a few opportunities uh, throughout the first half because uh, we were kind of opened up here and there. We kind of made mistakes. Uh, we had some slips. We had some uh, tackles that didn't, that didn't go our way. Um, as far as Leicester City went, it just seemed like every bounce uh, really came to them. Uh, it seemed like they were very fortunate on the bounces today. Um, I know there's a lot of complaints uh, from fans between like the first half and the second half. Uh, the first half, we kind of you know we dominated them uh, for the most part. We looked dangerous uh, in just about every single attack. Um, even though it was tough to uh, break them down at first. Uh, we still had opportunities here and there. Uh, Theo Walcott had, had a beautiful pass by uh, Mesut Ozil. Um, I mean, you know, the guy's awareness and his ability to see a pass, uh, to see an opening, um, you know, and for Theo Walcott to also see it and to react to it. Um, I thought Theo should have made it, should have gave it another touch and then wrapped it around the keeper, but uh, you know, he just took a shot right on uh, Swartzer and. Uh, Swartzer remained big and you know pretty much almost ricocheted right off of his face um, but that was that was one of our real clear-cut uh, uh, opportunities in the beginning of the game um, Mesut Ozil looked I mean everybody looked pretty good uh, in the first half as far as our attacking it was it was a strong attacking uh, you know front you know Lexi Sanchez up front Theo Walcott on the wing Ozil on the wing uh, Santi as the 10, and then Riziki as the CM. Um, I would have liked to see, you know, Danny Welbeck up front, but obviously uh, coming back from injury, uh, you know, he played almost <clears throat> almost the full game against Spuds uh, on Saturday, so obviously it was for, you know, fitness reasons that he didn't play, uh, and they played Lexi Sanchez up front just so he wouldn't have to maybe work as hard and trying to protect him. Uh, from uh, running his ass off like he normally does when he does on the wing. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities. We finally broke him down. We finally got that uh, first goal on a set piece uh, from Mesut Ozil taking the corner. Uh, you know, because Shoney just, you know, he, he, probably, he pretty much just walked into the space where Mesut Ozil placed it, and all he had to do was pretty much, you know, do a kind of like a lazy kick and run right in the back of the net. Uh, it was piss poor defending by uh, Leicester City. Um, you know, it, it's you know it's kind of odd uh, coming from a you know a bottom half team because bottom half teams they they stress so much on set pieces and they work on set pieces over and over again and in training and that's like their bread and butter to defend set pieces and to also uh, score on set pieces. Um, that's usually when you know you're a bottom half club or even the bottom club of the league. Uh, you know, set pieces are your bread and butter, and they just fell asleep. Um, you know, because Shoney, like I said, had a, had an open uh, had an open lane to do whatever he really wanted to do. He could even ran up as hard as he could and and try to head the ball if he wanted to. But um, he did the smart move and just let it come down on his foot and and just you know he pretty much just slammed it in the back of the net. So that was goal one. Uh, Mesut Ozil, you know, in the last four games, uh, three goals, two assists. He's been playing absolutely amazing uh, for us you know it, it seems like he's rejuvenated he's refreshed uh, you know he's trying to prove a point um, you know on our second goal and I wish Mesut Ozil would do more of this uh, he just he just had a rocket shot uh, with his left foot on goal uh, challenging Swartzer you know he saw a little bit of an opening and he, you know it was just a rocket off of his left foot um, I wish he would do more of that because his left foot is deadly uh, you've seen, you know, over time throughout his career, uh, some of the goals that he's had outside of the box with his left foot that he can curl it in and 
Uh, like I said, you know, his left foot is deadly. Uh, Swartzer couldn't really handle it. He parried it away. Uh, of course, Steele Walcott was right there uh, to clean it up and to score the goal. Uh, people are trying to give Mesut Ozil an assist for that, but you you don't get an assist for that. I don't know what why people were saying uh, during the game that Mesut Ozil in the last four games has three goals and three assists. You don't get an assist for uh, a shot on goal, and then it comes you know it, it gets parried out. You don't get an assist for that. So I don't know why people are are trying to say that was an assist because it wasn't. Uh, so it's it's three and two for for Mesut Ozil in the last four. Uh, but again, you know it's you know. Mesut Ozil challenging the keeper, uh, keeping him on his toes. Uh, and, of course, like I said, you know, in some of my past episodes, good things will happen if, if you try to put a shot on goal uh, because not every goalkeeper can handle it the right way. Not every goalkeeper can make the right decisions. Uh, even in Schwarzer, you know, he's a, a seasoned veteran. You know, he's 42 years old. He's been, I think he almost has 700 uh, uh, BPL appearances uh, under his belt. And, you know, even veterans, seasoned veterans, make mistakes and they parry it the wrong way or, or uh, you know, they should have caught it instead of tried to parry it. And, you know, Theo Walcott was there to clean it up for the second goal. Uh, even after that second goal, we were still dangerous. Um, during, you know, around that second goal, that's when Alexi Sanchez got injured. Um, it was clear that he was injured. He was grabbing his knee, uh, grabbing his left knee. Um, you know, anytime a player kind of does that, you, you know, you kind of hold your breath, especially if you're an Arsenal fan, because we've had so many different knee injuries over the years. Um, of course, the team doctor and everything, the, the you know, the physio came out, uh, checked him out. He came off and he came back on. He came back on and he didn't look the same. He was always trying to, you know, bend his leg, bend his knee, uh, trying to shake the leg a little bit. Uh, couldn't run. Uh, could barely walk. Um, and if you, I mean, if you watch Alexi Sanchez even one game, uh, other than this game, you would, I mean, that guy can't, that guy can't stand still for more than five seconds. He's always running around. He's always active. And, the second after, you know, he got injured and he was back on the pitch, uh, he was almost, I mean, he was kind of useless. I mean, we were playing with 10 men basically for the rest of the half because uh, he just couldn't run. He couldn't, he could barely even walk. Um, and yet, here's Arsene Wenger, Steve Bolden, the physio, everybody sitting on the bench just watching it. When a player acts like that, when he can barely move, uh, when he's still trying to shake shake the injury off um, especially if it's a knee injury I mean that's something that you don't want to screw around with uh, we were up 2-0 at that point and here's Arson, here's Steve Bold the physio, everybody sitting on the bench watching Alexi Sanchez struggle uh, for the rest of the first half and what it was about it was, it was a good 15 minutes that he was back he was out there um, it, it was a good, I mean it was ridiculous uh, I believe it happened somewhere around like the 30th minute, 32nd minute, and he finished out the half. Why? I don't know. Um, that's a piss poor managing decision right there. Uh, that's your best player uh, struggling out there, um, having a possible knee knee injury. You go back. You go back to Mesut Ozil's injury. It was almost the same t- type of damn thing. Um, with Mesut Ozil's injury, you could almost see when it happened. I, I, I think he slipped uh, at Stamford Bridge uh, when he was trying to go after a ball to uh, throw throw a ball back in. Uh, it went out of bounds, and, and he slipped on, on the turf. And you could see his reaction afterwards where he kind of uh, squinted a little bit <clears throat> that you thought he might, maybe got injured, and he finished it out the game as well instead of possibly, you know, raising his hand up and say, you know, I'm injured, take me out. Um you know, I was screaming after, <clears throat> even after the first half, if Lexi Sanchez is brought back on in the second half, um, I'm going to join that Wenger out crew. Uh, because if he is injured, uh, of course we'll know more in the coming days uh, if there's any type of x-rays or MRIs done um, to see if there is any type of ligament damage. 
uh, to Alexis Sanchez, maybe even muscle damage or, or you know, uh, you know, even like a sprained knee. You know, sprained knees take a little while to uh, to recover from. Uh, I've had a couple sprained knees in, in my lifetime, and, and you know, it, it takes a good five to six weeks just to fully heal, uh, to f- to feel right again. Uh, after the game, you know, of course, Alexis Sanchez comes out in the second half, and he still didn't look right. You know, he he was trying to run as hard as he could, and he still just didn't look right. Uh, his facial expressions, his 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 uh, uh, his body language, it just it just didn't look right. Uh, after the game, you know, Arsene Wenger comes out and says, uh, Lexi said he was okay, and he said he refused to come out of the game. There's a time and place where you need to be a manager, and you need to, you need to protect your players from themselves. And this was one of those times. We were up 2-0. We were dominating the game at that point. Um, you know, even after Alexis got hurt. And, I mean, we were still dominating the game. We were playing with 10 men. We were still threatening. We were still threatening to get another goal, uh, even towards the end of the first half. Um, I mean, that first half, I mean, it was all kind of like Mesut Ozil. I mean, he was everywhere. Uh, he was running his ass off. He was defending. He was trying to make things happen, the passes he was making. Um, he made another couple other passes to like Santi and Alexis, and I mean he was just playing great. Uh, like I said, he you know he's really out there right now, pr- proving a point that he deserves to be in the you know starting eleven. Uh, that he is one of the best players in the Premier, Premier League. He's one of the best players on Arsenal. Um, well, like I said, going into that, you know after that, I mean Arsene should have just pulled him. If he was a good manager, if he cared about his players. Uh, especially if he is injured, he should have just pulled him, put in Giroud, put in Welbeck, uh, even put in Theo Walcott up top, and then bring in whoever to play on the wing. Um, that's what should have happened. You don't let one of your best players, if not your best player, to go back out there when he was struggling in the first half. Uh, you just don't do it. You. you <laughs> You know, there, there's a time and place to... I mean, you have to be strong. You have to say, this is my team, this is my decision. It's not your decision, it's my decision. As a manager, that, you know what, we're going to be cautious about this. We're up 2-0, so it's not not a big deal. And I'm going to pull you, just in case. And, and save you from yourself, pretty much. And, you know, maybe we'll do some tests, you know, tomorrow, next day or something, and figure out what's going on. You know, maybe it was just a little knock. Maybe it was a kind of like a knee to knee clash. Um, even like I said, even if it's a sprained knee, that's that's still serious business. That's still, you know, four, five, six weeks on the shelf. Uh, because if you if you run around with a sprained knee, it can only get worse. It's never going to heal. Um, you know, that, it's the same thing with a, a a like a high ankle sprain or even a low ankle ankle sprain. Um, you need time off to to let it heal. Um, so again, you know, Arsene Wenger not stepping up as a manager uh, really pisses me off, especially when it is a Alexi Sanchez um, that, you know, we bought for 35 million pounds or whatever, 35 million euros. And um, one Arsenal fan on, on Twitter said, because uh, I said I was going to join the Wenger out crew if he is injured, uh, if Alexi Sanchez is injured, I'm going to join the Wenger out crew because um, that's not a manager. That's not a manager I want. That's not a manager uh, that's not going to save the players from themselves. He's only caring about three points, and that's it. He doesn't care about the the, the health of his own players, that he's going to keep on running them into the ground. That's not, a, that's not a manager I want. You know, I had a Arsenal fan tweet me. He said, well, who bought him? And I'm just like, this is the dumbest logic I ever heard in my life. Uh, to say, you know, if he is injured, that I'm going to join the Wenger out crew, but just because Arson bought him, I should just let it go. I mean, that's the dumbest logic I ever heard in my life. Um, for me, as a fan, you know, I care about the players. I care about their their fitness. I care about their health um, uh, of saving players from themselves. You know, because it's difficult. You've you've played any type of sport uh, in your life, and you kind of come up limping. You kind of come up injured. Um, where you think you can always shake it off, you can always you can, you can always press on, um, but in reality you're hurting a team. And in reality, sometimes someone needs to tell you to, you know what, just take a break, 
you know, get them next time. There, there's always going to be a next game. Pretty simple, right? That's the logic, I think. There's always going to be a next game. Uh, again, up 2-0, you know, why not pull them? You know, just dumb logic from some Arsenal fans uh, saying, you know, just because Arsene Wenger v- bought him, uh, we should always trust Arsene Wenger. You know, not in this case, especially if he comes up with an injury. Uh, going into the second half, it was a tale of two halves. Uh, even coming out in the, se- in the second half, in the first spot, probably about like 10 minutes, we still looked somewhat dangerous. Uh, but it was after that, it was just, you know, once Alexis uh, got off finally, uh, it was about the, you know, 62nd, 63rd minute, you know, Giroud came on. Uh, he was fucking worthless. Um, you know, I don't know if it was because we played, this was the second game in about three and a half days. Um, it, it, you know, guys look tired, you know, uh, uh, Mesut Ozil, uh, Santi even, uh, some of those guys really look tired, uh, as, as the game progressed. Uh, you know, they were able to nick a goal, um, obviously, um, uh, and to, you know, to make a game of it. And it just seemed like after they nicked that goal, it was just, it was sloppy. It was just sloppy from that point on. Um, like I said, it was a, just a tale of two halves to where we dominated the first half. And it looked like Leicester City had absolutely zero chance whatsoever. But then they nick a goal in, in, in the second half, and all of a sudden it's a game. And from that point on, our passing was awful. Uh, the effort was awful. Um, you know, especially from Olivier Giroud. I mean, one sequence... Uh, Hector Bellerin was all by himself on 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 the wing, uh, driving towards goal, and no one's in the box. You just saw Olivier Giroud watching him walking up into the box, not trying to run, walk. And it's just, what are you doing out there? And, and that's supposed to be our our main striker. That's you know, I mean, that's that's pretty much in a nutshell uh, of why. Uh, I'd rather have a, a Danny Welbeck out there. Like I said, you know, Drew is, is is a good striker, but uh, sometimes the effort just isn't there. Sometimes just the awareness isn't there. Um, when Hector Bellerin is trying to make a move and trying to cross it into the box, uh, and you're just standing there watching him and walking gingerly into the box, and he made a cross, you know, if Drew was on top of it, he could have probably tried to flick it on goal uh, if he wanted to. But there's no one there. No one there. You know, and, he, and then he puts his hands on his head. And, you know, I, you know, his normal thing when he when he fucks up. You know, I just didn't get it. I, you know, his effort throughout the time when he came on onto the pitch uh, was lackluster. I mean, it was pathetic. Um, you know, it, I thought it was something that we possibly needed just because we didn't have any height. Uh, we didn't have any type of crossing into the box because we just didn't have the height, you know. Other than you know maybe Mesut Ozil was him and Riziki was probably like the tallest, uh, you know, midfielders that we had out there. You know, Theo's only about like five nine. I think he only has one header in his lifetime uh-huh, as a goal. You know, of course, Santi is 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 you know five five. Uh, Alexi Sanchez five seven. Even though he can get up, but uh, yeah, we hardly made any type of crosses into the box today. Of course, once Drew came on, you thought, uh, of course, this might be something we need. This is, you know, this is pretty much kind of like the right move because now we could start maybe crossing into the box and, and, and be dangerous and maybe get a header, but it just didn't happen. You know, his effort was, was terrible. Um, after Theo came off, we had zero pace. Uh, it changed the game because it's easy to defend slow. You know, our fastest player was Hector Bellerin. Uh, Koshoni is probably next, and then probably Ozil. Um, after that, it was, you know, I, I know they're not super slow, but, you know, Riziki is up there in age, and, you know, Santi doesn't have great pace. Um, you know, Aaron Ramsey was out there for a little bit, and then he gets injured. Uh, what happened with him, you know, I, I kept watching it back, and it's just, I don't, he was grabbing his ankle at one point, and then he was. Gra- I just. I don't know if it's another hamstring. I don't know if it's a calf injury. Uh, I don't know if it's an ankle injury. But you know, he immediately went down and and, and made the, uh, um, you know, made the hand signal of he needs to be changed out. Um, luckily, we had another substitute left, uh, because 
you know, we would have really been screwed because of how sloppy we we were playing. Uh, luckily, we did have another substitution. Of course, he he brought in Flamini, uh, which uh, you know, again, we had zero pace out there. We had zero threats uh, to really get behind and really to uh, make any type of, of of dangerous threats towards Leicester City. And like I said, you know, it's easy to defend slow. Um, you thought with that kind of with, with that kind of group out there that could that, that that's so good on the ball and and so good on on passing. Uh, could do a better job, but they just didn't. <clears throat> you know, everybody was giving the ball away all, all of a sudden. You know, Santi was giving the ball away. Uh, you know, Aaron wasn't out there <laughs> enough to give the ball away. Even even Coughlin at times were giving the ball away. Uh, sometimes players were running into each other uh, and preventing themselves from uh, holding on to, to possession. Uh, and sometimes when, when two players clashed, you know, it just seemed like the ball went right towards uh, a Leicester City player. You know, it's just really odd of watching of how sloppy it was, but then of all the lucky bounces that Leicester City was 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 gaining uh, near the end of the game, and of course it was just it was just a nail biter. Again, once again, um, to finish out that game, but they finished it out. Uh, sometimes you got to win on the lease. Sometimes you have to have some of these games. Uh, during the season, but again, uh, when you're at home, when you're dominating the first half, uh, this is something that shouldn't happen. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously there was a lot of emphasis on 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 coming out in the first half and and really, you know, taking the taking the game by the horns and really proving uh, the players' worth, so to speak. But in, again, in that second half, which was it was just awful. Uh, it just didn't make any sense of. Uh, how you can play so well in the first half, and then it would it just goes all to shit in the second half. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, luckily after this game we have a break. Uh, our next game is until Sunday uh, against Middlesbrough uh, in the FA Cup tie. Um, you know, thank God we have some we have some time off because it, it, it definitely looked like some of these guys needed it. Some of these guys need to uh, really just kind of like reboot, refocus. Uh, you know, just rest too. Uh, playing, you know, two games in three and a half days, it's it's tough for anybody. It's tough for any type of, any type of, uh, any type of side, um, especially when you didn't have that much rotation within the squad. Um, yeah, Theo started, Alexis Sanchez started, uh, but again, you know, Alexis Sanchez was pretty much useless after about the 32nd minute when he got injured. Um, so that was always kind of tough. But uh, you know, Theo played okay. Uh, I thought. You know, of course, he could have had a couple more chances. He did have a couple chances uh, to really sc- score another goal. Um, you know, he defended a little bit better. I think he's he's finally starting to get uh, get it into his head that he's going to have to start defending if he wants to play. Uh, I think that was a I think that's one of the warning shots from uh, the Spuds game that of of you know why he didn't get to start. Um, and I think he's he's slowly learning that you know what I'm gonna have to start playing both ends uh, if I'm gonna want to get in the starting eleven and you know that's kind of a good thing you know that is a good thing that uh, you know some players are kind of noticing that that you know what you're gonna have to put in and ex- you know you're gonna the shift that you're gonna be in you re- you really have to put in the effort uh, if you want to get into the starting eleven because you know there's a lot of uh, you know even with people out even with the ox out uh, Jack is coming back soon. You know, even with some of those guys out, uh, there's still there's still plenty of competition. Uh, as far as Thomas Rizicki <coughs> goes, um, I like what I saw out of this, out of him in that CM position. Um, I hope I see more of it, uh, just because he is so good on the ball. He is he is a a good passer. He makes smart decisions. Um, yeah, he's just like any other player here and there. He, he'll, he, you know, he'll try to thread the needle sometimes on a pass, uh, where he might just give it away. But uh, again, it, it's it's it was ten times better than what we saw uh, from Aaron Ramsey in the Spuds game. Um, but again, Jack is coming back soon. You know, we just don't know when the, his fitness levels will be coming back up. Uh, you know, I figure probably maybe in a week or two. I, I would think. I know uh, they said he's back. You know, in training right now, whether he's in full training or not, who knows? You know, Arsene Wenger came out um, before the game and said he doesn't. He just he doesn't know when Jack will be back. You know, that's just kind of like manager talk. But uh, hopefully, he'll be back sooner rather than later because 
we definitely need him. But again, Thomas Rizicki at that at that CM spot, I think it's a good move. Uh, of course, defensive wise, who knows what's going to happen with that? Uh, we won't know that until uh, later on. You know, if he continues to play at that CM spot, can he be more of a defensive player? Uh, can he be a box to box player? Does he have the energy to do that? Uh, since he is a little bit up there in age. Uh, but again, it's going to be good for us that we don't have a game until Sunday. These guys can, you know, hopefully get a full day off, uh, get some rest in, uh, you know, rest those legs, you know, get refocused <clears throat> and get ready for Middlesbrough. And even after Middlesbrough, uh, we don't have a game until Saturday after that, and that's Crystal Palace at Crystal Palace. So we're going to have some time off here uh, before it gets kind of crazy, obviously. Um, you know, after Crystal Palace, that'll be the uh, Monaco game, the Champions League home tie against Monaco on the 25th, um, which I'm going to. I can't wait. Uh, you know, it's less than two weeks away. Uh, can't wait to get to London. Can't wait to see that game. Um, but again, that's this. You know, after the Crystal Palace game, that's when it starts getting a little bit crazy, and that's where uh, time off is going to be a luxury. Uh, that's just, this is this is going to be the point of the season where rotation is going to be key if there is going to be any rotation uh, because obviously as you see you know leaving Alexis Sanchez and you know you're you're you know running players into the ground you know trusting the player way too much of saying oh I'm fine I'm fine coach don't don't, don't you know don't pull me you know save players from themselves sometimes especially with Alexis because uh, he's just so hardcore um but again, you know, after the Crystal Palace, we got Monaco, and then after that, we have Everton. Um, that's going to be a tough week. Um, that's going to be a tough week of fixtures. Uh, of course, we have Monaco and Everton at home, so that's going to be a benefit for us. Um, you know, Everton's not playing as not playing great. I mean, they can they can barely nick a goal themselves. I think they have one goal in their last something like six or seven games, which is ridiculous uh, if you really think about it. Um, but again, it's going to come hot and heavy. Uh, because even after the Everton game, we got another midweek game against Queen's Park Rangers. Uh, then we have the quarterfinal of the FA Cup that Saturday after that, and then we have uh, then we have a week off. Thank God. Um, after the uh, quarterfinal uh, FA Cup tie on March 7th, between March 7th and March 14th, so that's going to be a huge week for uh, to get some rest. But of course, um, as it says on Arsenal.com, fixtures are subject to change. So. Uh, who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, guys definitely need to rest. They need to refocus. And they just need to get back to the winning ways, regardless of how they win. Uh, even if it's ugly, even, even if it's beautiful, you know, three points is three points. And sometimes that's the way we got to look at it. And, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, right now we're looking at it. We're, we're, we're dissecting everything under a microscope. But, you know, two months from now, no one's going to remember this game. No one's going to remember how shitty we played. Um, you know, maybe some people will, but at the same time, you know, you finish in the top four, everybody forgets about everything. You know, you, you, you make a good possible FA Cup run, everybody forgets about everything. But uh, again, the main focus should be top four, nothing else. Uh, like I said in my last episode, because um, as the table stands currently, of course, there's games to be played uh, today. Uh, you know, Southampton plays today, uh, West Ham or Manchester United plays today. Uh, you know, West Ham plays. Um, so, I believe West Ham play Southampton. I believe that's it. I, I, I want to say that's it. So, I really hope West Ham makes an effort. Um, you know, another kind of negative you could say about today is it's goal differential. You know, we won 2 1, but it should have easily been like 4 0. Um, of course, West or Southampton is at plus 21. Currently, we're at plus 19. Uh, we're tied on points, but uh, if West Ham, you know, really comes out and and just and just you know makes a game of it and and wins, uh, that's good for us, obviously. But again, on goal differential, it's it's that's the, that's the key. Um, but hopefully, we can see some upsets today. Hopefully, can we can see things that go in our way. You know, obviously, Tottenham. <laughs> you know, after their World Cup victory, uh, World Cup final victory, and their parade, their mini parade that they probably had on Sunday, you know, went off or not. You know, it. You know, <laughs> you know they were. You know, they were dancing in the streets. They were talking shit, and you know, it. It took one game for them to drop. 
uh, and Arsenal is back on top of them. And, you know, even Liverpool beating them, it didn't affect anything. Uh, we won today. We we moved up into the you know at minimum we'll be fifth after t uh, after today's games. Uh, so that's that work. You know that's minimum. Uh, we can be as high as fourth if Manchester United loses. Um, but again, you know even Liverpool wins are still sitting in seventh. Tottenham at sixth. Um, you know all their effort, all their all their passion that they showed on on Saturday didn't mean shit. And you know. All is right in the world, I guess you could say. You know, it's, I guess you could, you know, the old cliche, it's funny how things work out. But again, you know, our main focus needs to be top four. Uh, we can't be, you know, letting things like this happen continuously. Uh, again, every game should be a cup final. Every game should be, uh, you know, balls out. Win, 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 three points. Um, three points or failure, that should be the model going into the rest of the season. Uh, especially in, in Premier League games. Because, again, 13 games left. That's all we got. Uh, we need to make the most of it. We need to get max points every single time out. Um, because, you know, third is still a possibility, fourth is a possibility. But we need to stay focused on that. We, 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 we can't, uh, you know, we can't lose focus like we did in this Leicester City game in the second half. We just, uh, you know, we looked tired. We just didn't look focused. Um, luckily, we got away with it. And three points is three points.